Professor said that you heard that uh, magic is a fact and the Prophet ﷺ suffered from magic. Uh, is this true? And what happened to him and the Sharia ah during the Wahi, during the uh, time where he was under the magical spell? Number one, the hadith which indicates that the Prophet ﷺ suffered from a magical spell is a sound hadith. And it was for a whole month. Uh, and this hadith brings a lot of issues and problems, but there's also uh, obviously benefits for us. But people are confused by it to the extent many people deny this. But this hadith is mutafaq ali Bukhari and Muslim. And that is that our Prophet himself was the subject of sihr. And that's something that Ahl Sunnah by and large believes. And other groups deny the Mu'tazila deny this and the progressives deny this and many people in our times deny this. But we are a people of tradition, Ahl al-Athar, and we believe if the text textbooks say it and the Isnad is authentic, we believe it. So there are numerous narrations in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim that our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Sihr was done against him. And Aisha narrates that Sihr was done on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he began to imagine that he had done something when he hadn't done it. Notice, she doesn't say, well, he became forgetful in his old age or something. This was actually a magic spell. He had a spell cast over him that was uh, tampering with his memory. Interesting stuff. So you could actually cast a spell on Muhammad. Uh, we have more detail in Sahih al-Bukhari 5765. Aisha narrated. Magic was worked on Allah's apostle so that he used to think that he, had, that he had had sexual relations with his wives while he actually had not. Just distort it. It's like, what the hell are you creating? A, stop it, you're torturing us. <laughs> we have the evidence. No one can dispute the evidence. We heard the evidence. We saw the evidence. Then one day he said, Oh, Aisha, do you know what Allah has instructed me concerning the matter I asked him about? Two men came to me, and one of them sat near my head, and the other sat near my feet. The one near my head asked the other, What is wrong with this man? The latter replied, He is under the effect of magic. The first one asked, Who has worked magic on him? The other replied, Laban bin al Labid bin al Asam, a man from Bani Zareik who was an ally of the Jews and was a hypocrite. The first one asked, What material did he use? The other replied, A comb, and the hair stuck to it. So think about this, my friends. Muhammad is going around receiving revelations from Allah. Gabriel, an angel, comes to him pretty regularly. But if you get a hair from his hairbrush, you can give him delusional thoughts and false beliefs and tamper with his memory and have him walking in going, Hey, Aisha, I just had sex with you, right? No? No, you didn't. What are you talking about? What? What? What, so Muhammad's sitting off by himself imagining that, I mean, actually yeah, thinking that he's right. having sex with Aisha when he's There's not? This is some weird, weird yeah. stuff. <laughs> It's so disturbing. And uh, the, one of the reasons I find this interesting is that there was a high priest of Wicca years ago who tried to cast a spell on me. And not only did it not work, he died a short while after that. Trying to do that, right? Um, the spell didn't work. And why is that? Because he who is in me it's is greater. greater than he who is in the world. And Muslims tell me, Muslims tell me, oh, I need to abandon Christianity and I need to follow Muhammad, a man who was not protected by God from magic. Well, let me tell you why you were protected as you quoted scripture, 1 John 4, 4. But here's another scripture, Numbers 23, 23, speaking of Israel in the Old Testament. And I'll show you how that applies to Christians today. Numbers 23, 23. There is no sorcery against Jacob, nor any divination against Israel. It now must be said of Jacob and of Israel, oh, what God has done. This is talking about Balaam who was actually hired to put a curse on Jacob, and he could not do so because God would not allow it to happen. And in the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, our blessed Master and Savior, Luke 10, 17 to 20. Luke 10, 17 to 20. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us 
in your name. Muslims, you need to know this name because only he can save you. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Indeed, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So not only Jesus, but also his followers had the kind of spiritual power that could give orders to demons, and the demons would have to obey. In his name, in the majestic name of Jesus. Our but Lord. get a hair from Muhammad's hairbrush, and you can make him act pretty weird for, yeah. for a long time. This is odd, because of Muhammad, who is the last prophet, he's the example for all of humanity. He's getting tricked by the devil. <laughs> he's got magic spells yeah. put on him. You know, he's imagining he's, you know, having relations with his wife, wives mm -hmm. when he's not. He thinks um, he's possessed. He's possessed. He's he tries suicidal. to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got a lot of problems. No, but 